Well, hey, good uh, late afternoon, early evening to you guys from uh, Homestead, Florida here. Yeah, if you know where I'm at, next stop is gonna be the Keys. We've been having some extreme weather here in Florida in February. Um, extreme weather here. I mean, the whole country's just getting storms and wind and snow and craziness. And I guess the, the worst part of it for Florida is the temperature drops to 75 degrees and you get insane 40 mile an hour gusts of wind. So I decided to uh, postpone my trip to the Keys a couple days ago and just kind of wait out everything because I can't even pop a drone up. It's been so windy. We're going to go to the Keys tomorrow morning in this video. You guys are going to come with me. Hopefully we're, we're going to get through this together, guys. Thanks for joining me. I'll be uploading this video with some Nomad internet. There is a link below for unlimited internet. And this is where I'm gonna be boondocking. I was gonna say stealth camping. I'm not stealth camping right now, but I looked on Google Earth and found an open lot here next to a fast nail in Homestead. And uh, there's evidence that people have been here before because there's a couch and a mattress and just a bunch of garbage through here. <laughs> so, but it's not stealth camping right now. However, one of the cool things about the winter time is the sun's gonna set a little earlier, like 5.30 p.m. So once the sun goes down and it gets dark, I think that this will be a wonderful spot. I won't stick out. You got a main road over there on the other side of Wendy's, and then you got an industrial road behind me here. This will be completely dark. There's no lights anywhere here. So it's gonna be really dark. And then I'll get a fresh start in the morning. Sound good? All right. Thanks for joining me, guys. Can't wait to take you to the Keys with me. Let's get some sleep. We made it. <laughs> it is so incredibly windy here. And um, the only thing guaranteed in life, guys, is that things will always change. I, in just a second, if I don't get a violation first, I have to unhook the car to be able to make a U-turn because my spot is no longer a spot. Nope. Okay, seriously, you cannot tell how windy it is. We've got 55 mile per hour gusts of wind, which is almost a category one hurricane here if it was sustained. But check this out. Boat trailer with vehicle parking only. One parking space only. I am in violation right now, so I've got to hurry. First time I came down here to Key West, parked the RV right there, Yoda, without the uh, decals. Got my intro shot right there, and now there's new signs over there that say, no parking on the grass. So I can't even get a picture. It is uh, gone forever. And this whole spot says no overnight parking. So I'm bummed and I don't know what to do because I kind of put all them. <laughs> Literally almost knocked me over there. You have no idea how good this uh, microphone muff is that I have. Well, all right, I'll get to it. Sorry, I felt like just getting out of there real quick because I didn't want to get in trouble, but you know. Um, I don't know, man. It's a really weird feeling. There's no reason to get upset about it or anything. It is what it is. Florida's, Florida's tough. Florida has always been tough, but it certainly amazes me that everything just keeps getting locked down more and more. And um, okay, let me go outside. Even though it's crazy windy. Okay, because here's the thing. Like I said, um, I even checked this morning. There were no cancellations at the two state parks. There's nowhere to legally camp out in Key West. And I'm still 50 miles from Key West. You know, the Florida Keys. I'm right in the middle at Marathon Key right now. I love the color of the water, by the way. That's pretty cool. But if I can't do anything, then why would I go to Key West? You know, 
I'm just gonna get in trouble if I try to boondocks. You know, it's kind of one of those things. Plus, is the RV gonna be okay if I go out and hang it? I don't know. I, I feel like I really, really pushed this too hard to make it happen. And sometimes you just can't force things, you know? Sometimes you have to accept that uh, it's just not going to work. I'm gonna make a couple more phone calls and um, I'll get back to you. Press 11 for concession billing department. <laughs> Press 12 for concession group sales and events. Camping. 13 for John Pennekamp Coral Reef State Park general information. 13. Hey, I was wondering, just out of curiosity, did you have any cancellations for camping for one night tonight? Tonight, we do not. Okay, thank you. Oh, wait, do you have uh, day use available um, if I have an RV? Yep. Um, you park it over in our boat trailer area, um, but you can come in for the day. Okay, thank you. So that's it. I checked uh, Honda Baha'i Campground. I checked the Coral Reef here. Everything is booked there. Um, you know, and it's just one of those things. I had it set in my mind and actually even over on Patreon last night, I told everybody on Patreon what was going to happen. Eric, you know better, Eric. You really do. Uh, <laughs> everything's going to change and nothing's going to work. So we'll just go. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm already here. <laughs> I can't find anywhere else to park. So let's go to John Penning camp and charge for the whatever the day use is and uh have some fun relax have lunch and and then i'm gonna have to hit the road by whatever time the state park closes for day use that's my new plan what can you do man what can you do i know better than to force it i really do i've been doing this over 10 years eric you know better you cannot force it you gotta just go with the flow man oh well uh, so now we're going, it says north, but we're going straight back east <laughs> and going back to the first key there, Key Largo today. All right, so I have actually uh, camped here before. I got a campground one time years ago, but, you know, th like I said, th things have changed lately. This place, you have to make your reservation on day 365 a year from when you're actually going to want to go. And... I can't live that lifestyle. A lot of people can. I just, I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow, let alone do I want to make a reservation for a year from now in a city and state that I have no idea what's out of my control at that point, you know? I'm more like a boondocker that likes to just plan and be spontaneous, but for certain things, you do have to reserve it if you really want it. So I'm going to ask one more time when we get up here just to see if they had any last minute cancellations. If not... Let's see here. Park admission for one person is 450. But I'll bet because I'm an RV, it's 20 or something. Hi there. You didn't have any last minute camping cancellations, did you? Not yet. All right. No cancellations. However, on this trip coming back, uh, coming back east, uh, Captain Jack's campground called me and she said, guess what? We just got a cancellation for Friday. I'm like, uh, that's great. Thank you. I appreciate you letting me know. Unfortunately, I don't have anywhere to, to just boondock or camp down here for the next three days, so I can't. But thank you. That was nice of her to call me back, at least. I can't fit here, so I guess we're just kind of stuck behind these people the whole way. Maybe they're going to move over. Hey, thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. I don't want to get too close to them, but now here's the other thing is I'm probably going to have to unhook because if I remember the parking over here, we're not turning there. No, but if I remember it right, you have to back in. It's been several years. I think it's been six or seven years since I've been here. Actually, I may have camped here. I don't I don't remember, but let's go see if I have to unhook the car. I got to unhook the car, whatever the oversized vehicle and trailer parking. But you know what? Watch this, I got a trick for you. If there was one more vehicle right here, I would not be able to pull this off. But watch this. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And then, go. I think we're gonna make it. Hopefully Tater Tot's not gonna be in another lane. Tater Tot's kind of in another lane, but it's really far back. So I think we're okay. It was a crazy day today, huh, Jax, man? It was so crazy. Oh my goodness, now what, we gonna relax? 
Sounds good, man. You want some kibbles? You do? You want to shake it off? You want to go in the water? Yeah, you want to go kitty snorkeling? You don't want to do the kitty snorkeling? Okay, okay. All right, soak it in, everybody. This is as much of the keys as you're gonna get from Key Largo here. Key Largo, Pontigo, baby, mother we go, wherever it goes. Let's go check out the water. I've got the oven and the RV preheating for uh, lunch. Oh yeah. I'll at least say this, the Florida weather is fantastic. The wind has died down a little bit. It's not like a painful wind that's gonna knock me down, so. Quit farting over there. You guys quit, you, these boats need to stop farting, okay? And also they got the uh, Snorkel Express. I did one of these many, many years ago. Went uh, snorkeling out there, but because of COVID, it's all shut down. But the park's open, I mean, but well, I was gonna get some information about the kayaks. I might want to take a kayak out. They got paddle boards and all sorts of kayaks and uh, there's some canoes over there. Doesn't look very popular, but I want to talk to somebody and see if they're still renting them right now. I guess the new information here, how to rent kayaks and paddle boards. You have to do it all online. It's the only way you're gonna be able to do it, but you know what? You really, you can't complain. I mean, again, some states are still completely shut down, unable to find a way to do this. So um, it's pretty cool that they have found a way to work around COVID magically and uh, allow us to still recreate. I will definitely check that out when I get back to the RV. How clear is the water? It's pretty clear. It doesn't look like the blue that we started at over in Marathon today, but um, Somebody on a paddleboard and a kayak out there, so they are renting them today. Cool. Let's kind of tentatively plan that, okay? Let's go check out... No, no gators. No gators in salt water. Whoa, look how white that sand is. <laughs> what do you think, guys? What do you think? Yeah, you can also rent some uh, snorkel gear here. And somebody's got some gear, they, they they rent it and you can look down here and see what you see. I wanna put my feet in the keys. How's the water, Eric? Incredibly warm, that is insane. It's like a heated pool in here. That is crazy. That ain't so bad. That ain't bad at all. The park uh, closes at 5 p.m. to day use people. Otherwise the campers can come out here till dusk. Somebody's uh metal detecting up on the beach but yeah all right well let's go back to the rv i'll throw that pizza in the oven real quick and uh we'll look into renting a kayak all right, i think we're done check her out there oh yeah it's not delivery folks <laughs> yeah i always put my pizza on the inside of the cardboard box that way i don't have to clean up anything else where after i'm going to cut the pizza up and uh if you're in an rv or you maybe heard this rumor how hard it is to cook uh, in an RV propane oven. I don't know what, what, what it is, but you probably heard people get those weird stones that you have to put in there to distribute the heat. Otherwise, your pizza will just fall apart. My pizzas are beautiful every single... I mean, that's a beautiful pizza every single time. And it, this is all I do. I have been doing this for 10 years in every RV and every oven I've ever cooked in. Simple. Move this. It's gonna be normally sitting right here. Move this one shelf up to the highest shelf point. Do all of your cooking. I mean, lasagna, chicken breast, pizza, cook it all up here. The heat will come up and it'll cook everything. Even You don't need that weird cooking stone or anything. Just move your one middle tray from the middle to the top rack right there. Perfect pizza every single time. I'll cut it up and show you the bottom crust. See, look at this. Look how perfect that pizza is. Every time, it's that easy, guys. All right, I ate half of that health pie. Half of it, save the rest for another day. Let's go hop in a kayak. All right, I'm in my canoe and uh, we're gonna see some wildlife today. <laughs> guys, that's a uh, pelican there. It's our first wild animal here. How you doing, Mr. Pelican? Oh, he didn't wanna talk, okay. Oh man, it's great, it's great. I believe you call these mangroves. I think that's what those are called. And I, I also got a warning. I had to sign a disclaimer. This this wind is borderline. They, they don't want you to go out in this kind of wind because it can kind of take you away. He said uh, I shouldn't do the full route 
because you're gonna be fighting the wind a little bit. Which is fine by me. It's a good workout though, man. Imagine if I could do that. I used to have a portable inflatable kayak that I traveled with. That was a lot of fun. Oh, we're getting some wind behind us now. Come on, turn, turn, turn. Ah, oh, this is beautiful. This is awesome. Oh yeah, guys. Kayaking the Florida Keys here. Jeez, what a beautiful winter it's been. I do have priors for uh, losing a GoPro while I was kayaking back home in Washington. Yeah, it's still sitting at the bottom of Deep Lake. Or was it Long Lake? No, I think it was Deep Lake there, yeah. Miller Sylvania State Park still has a Nomadic Fanatic GoPro at the bottom. Ah, oh, so pretty out here. I'm gonna sneak around, you guys. Have a good day. You as well, man. You know, things change. Later on down the road, I may get an enclosed trailer that fits the smart car, and I can put the motorcycle in there, and a kayak, and all this fun stuff, you know? You just kind of adapt. Uh-oh, we got a fork in the road. Where am I going? Keep to the right, okay. It's like a crazy Disney ride. That's right, you may get wet. I mean, if you rock the boat too much, <laughs> you could certainly get wet. I'm so glad there's no gators in these waters. Okay, there's a branch there. There's, there, there's a branch right there. Yeah, it's there. <laughs> I'm really glad I got to end today on a good note, even though things didn't work. You know, it's really nice. This is such a peaceful little kayak trip too. They call this the the Eco Tour Trail, Eco Tour, whatever that means. I don't know, but yeah, that's what we're doing. Sharp right. Okay, not that, not quite that sharp, Eric. Jeez, cutting that one kind of close. Also, the the park office and everything closes at five. But the kayak guy said that I don't have to leave until it gets dark. So there's no rush. And uh, I'll let you know right now, my plan is to get back to the to central Florida basically tonight. So whatever I gotta do, I'll go grab a bite to eat somewhere. And then by 9 p.m. I wanna be on the road and get that five hour commute out of the way. So that I'll get parked tonight at like 2 a.m. in the morning. Yeah, that's my plan. Ye old fork in the road here. Hmm. Well, uh, let's go to the right. It looks like a little better opening here. But I may have to look at my map because I don't know which way we're supposed to turn now. That's wide open. Oh yeah, this is so nice. That's so nice. Oh man, this is great. This is just too good. That's too good. I'm gonna take a break, turn the camera off and get back to you guys in a little bit. I wanna take some pictures for Instagram. Also, I did some two behind the scenes clips for a Patreon. So if you're a Patreon member, go back and check out the uh, behind the scenes from the making of this video. Something a little different. Just kind of chill, get back in a little bit. Ooh, lots of fun. But you know what? On the way back when it got, when it really widened open and the wind's coming right at you, that was hard. I, I looked to the side a couple times and saw I wasn't moving at all. And I was really putting my arms into it, starting to panic like, oh crap, <laughs> I ain't gonna make it. That's a good workout though, that's fun. Maybe, maybe sometime I'll come back here and uh, the glass bottom boats will be open. That might be a fun one. I'd go snorkeling again too somewhere, somewhere else maybe later. But yeah, at least the park's open and got to celebrate because anytime I go out onto the water and don't lose my camera, my phone, my keys and all that, it's a good day, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's go check in on Jax, man. That's so cool. I got back and there was a note on my door. It says, hi, Eric. I got some great footage of you paddling back. 4K zoomed in. I can put it on a Google Drive if you want it. Larry and Alice, I'm just covering up their personal information there. Dang it, I'm gonna have to get a hold of him and see if I can include some of that. Jax, man. Oh, yeah?
Yeah, I really appreciate the uh, bonus video there from Larry, and, and Downsizing Makes Sense if you want to check him out on YouTube. And also, yeah, I did get a magnet. The uh, office concession there that has one door open on the other side closer to the water. They're just only letting two people in at a time to shop and get merchandise, like shirts and stuff, and magnets. So it's like a homemade looking magnet. It's got the shells hot glued on it. They're all a little different, and that's the kinds I like, so add that to my magnet collection. Well, you might recognize this place. I've been here before. RV bus parking here at the Cracker Barrel of Homestead, Florida. A little emptier on this particular little trip. Uh, I had to leave the park unexpectedly. And with state parks, anywhere really, bad communication can cause some unknowns and stuff. I mean, I got three different answers for my day use when I was supposed to leave. Remember when we came in, they told me you gotta be out by five. When I went on the kayak trip, the office where I got the magnet said, no, you don't have to leave. It's just the office locks up. We're not locking a gate or anything like that, but you got to leave before it's dark. So, you know, by 6.30 or something like that, but you got you to be out of here when it gets dark. I said, well, that's cool. That relates a little pressure as far as Miami traffic and stuff. Well, I got a knock on my door at 6.15 p.m. And it's a ranger in a gray brown shirt. And he said, what are you still doing here? I already locked the gate. Like, bro, calm down. What is the problem here? <laughs> and he goes on to tell me that I'm way past my time and I was supposed to leave. And I said, don't start that with me. You're the third different person that's given me a different answer with a different time. Now look, I will leave. I will do exactly what you want. It's going to take me no less than 10 minutes to pack everything up real quick and get on the road. That's, that's the best I can do. You yelling at me and having a different time than everybody else. He, he was on one, but you do get that on the road. So anyway, I'm gonna wait a couple hours and probably leave the Cracker Barrel here at about 8, 9 p.m. Try to get up towards the Orlando area and beat all the traffic and do some night driving, best I can do. Ooh, I passed out when I got here late last night. I, I mean, I almost didn't make it from the driver's seat to bed. I was so tired, but I made it out here to the Avon Park Walmart. Slept really good. The only reason I woke up this morning at 5.30 was because this Walmart, can you hear it? They're playing music on loudspeakers. 5.30 in the morning. Uh, but, you know, I feel better. It's a lot less stressful up here in Florida. You know, they don't have security going around telling everybody, you can't boondock. So, uh, it made me feel a lot better. What are my future plans? Well, you're just gonna have to wait and see. Thanks for joining me, guys. We'll see you in a few days. Bye-bye.